everyone. Sorry about like the long wait. I was talking backstage with my interviewee uh, for about like a half hour, actually longer than that. Um, going through, going over everything. So um, my apologies to everybody for the wait. Um, this is going to be a great interview. Like I have never looked forward. To, like uh, I'm so excited. Uh, my person's backstage, and we're going, you know, going over everything. I'm giddy. I'm sorry. So um, thank you for waiting. I'm not going to do the roll call because we were already super late. So hi everybody. Um, and I'm going to bring my guest up and start the show. So let me play this. Hey, Sinjin. Hello, everybody. How's it? As I normally like to say, you know, voila. Uh, uh, <laughs> Thank you, Sinjin, for being on my show tonight. Like, I never in a million years would ever thought that we'd be live uh, together. You know, life takes you in strange places. You just got to take it and see what happens. You know, I know we got a, whew, a spicy chat going on tonight. So, you know, I'm happy to be here. Thanks for accepting me. And um, let's see what's going to happen, bro. You know what I'm saying? Oh, it's uh, get, a, get a glass of wine or a drink, get some Imodium or a diaper because you, you know, you're you going to like crop your pants um, after this live. Uh, Something's going to happen. Because it's no secret that I have hated Tanya with the passion of a thousand burning suns. <laughs> Truly, it's not. You know what? I'm, um, she even told me she hates you as well. You know, so I think you guys have a, a good little mutual respect, whatever they were like. We, <laughs> yeah, we hate each other equally. Um, I probably hate her more because there's, there's things that Tanya has done. Um, that I just could not get on board with. And since you guys were on the show back in like 2019, like was like, when you first. Yeah, tw yeah, 2019 was the start. It's like almost like four years ago now, you know? Like, I'm like, dang, you know, time flies. But, you know, I'm happy that that time has passed. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, and like, God, like, kudos to you for surviving, Tanya. First of all, like, you know, and by the way, Sinjin, I love your new look. Yeah. You know, I got to go and I'm a little, I got, I don't know where all the curls are coming from. I just cut my hair short and all of a sudden it was just everywhere. What made so, you like cut all your hair off? You know what? To be honest, I was even thinking about getting rid of past trauma as well. What I've been through here in America, because I only started growing my hair out when I came to America for Tanya's request. So, um, you know, for me, it was fitting like, damn, bro, let me cut all this trauma off. Let me get all this past years off me. Let me just feel a little free, you know, feel a little younger, a little sexier. You know, I just, I just seemed like it was way overdue. I should have cut it the, the day I drove out of that driveway, to be honest. I think you look fantastic. I love the new look. Uh, I appreciate and it. And I think it suits you better than the long hair. I'm sorry. Yeah, so, no, like, I just... really, like, I'm, I'm down with that. Yeah, it's way more easier. I don't have to tie it up in a low ponytail and look all crazy everywhere. And, I'm just like, <laughs> <laughs> and how are you doing like now? You know, Johnny, I'm, I, to be honest, I'm doing very well. You know, I found a new love in my life. And it's somebody that really understands me way more than Tanya ever did. Somebody that kind of gives me that space to grow and not, you know, giving every 10 cents every minute on how I should change and why I should be like this and why I should vote for this person and why I should go to this march. And, you know, I just, I just feel a little bit more freedom, which I didn't feel in the past. You know, I was kind of in the past, I was kind of 
I wouldn't use the word groomed. It's a very bad word, but I was kind of like, well, yeah, safe, coming you know, to America. It, it sure fits. Yeah, you know, I was kind of like first time in America. I don't know. I don't know how the politics. I don't know how anything works. You know, so I allowed her to influence my mind. You know, to where I could feel comfortable. And now that I'm apart, I'm like, damn, I should have never let her inside my mind. But you know, I, I'm I'm a lot happier, bro. To be honest, like I say, I have a better you look, woman, and you seem happy. And like, I, you know, I'm I'm very, you know, I, I said some stuff about both you and Tanya. Not, you know, I said a lot of stuff about Tanya. Let's not let's yeah. like, hate, you know, I you know, everybody knows I hate her. Um, but uh, you know, what I said about you was like, you know, I can't believe he's with her. <laughs> yeah. Like, you know, it's it's crazy. Um, yeah, it was it was a. You know, to be honest with you, yeah, in the beginning, it felt like a holiday vibe. You know, we met in South Africa. She was out there. We were partying, having sex, drinking till four in the morning. Fucking, you know, you, you live that lifestyle and you're kind of like, hey, this is the person. Like, and you traveled. And and whenever we came back here and, like, got married, she just changed a lot for me. Oh, I kind of started to see the real, like, what's the motives behind all this, you know? Oh, we'll get there. I'm oh, I jumped the I'm gun. No, so hold on. <laughs> I'm too um, excited, Johnny. I am too. Like you know, I like I, you know, it's 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 not often where like listen. Um, I've hated Tanya. Everybody knows who's been following me that like I can't stand Tanya, and me and Tanya went toe to toe. Like there were articles written about me and Ta Tanya fighting. Um, like I've never agreed with any of Tanya's decisions or motives or whatever. Yeah. And, um, we, we were like, you know, I, ugh, I you know, of all the cast on 90 Day Fiance, she's number one on my shit list. Um, right under the skin there, eh? And I, I just, I never understood like, you know, how you could be with someone so Who's Tanya? Like it's she's horrible, like gross. I I hate her, um, but we'll get there. Um, so, sure will. <laughs> you know, and like the reason why you're on the slide tonight with me is because you know I guess like Tanya has been like you know speaking on podcasts or YouTube interviews or on IG lives talking about you and like you know when you've been quiet about her exactly. Like, and you know, you know, Johnny, like for me, it was like, I'm like, I haven't spoken to a podcast or anything about her in two years. Like when I left, I'm truly focused on me going forward and seeking something else. Yes, it was a sad moment leaving, you know, but that's my past, bro. And you know what? I wasn't that sad. Like I knew that my life was going to actually get a little better from going away from this situation I had with Tanya. And you know what? Like come back to your question, like how could I stay? In the beginning, it was great, bro. With, like I said, it was the vacation vibes and we're doing this and we're doing that. And she never really mentioned having real children. And she was just like, whatever the future brings. And I think as the show came on. How about just, her saying like you weren't her soulmate? Listen, that day, that was probably... Because remember, when you come into TLC, you don't quite know what to expect. You know, when I came, landed off the plane, I just got mic'd in the bathroom and said, hey, you know, some, some people might not like you much, but... This is your reality TV, and I, you don't know what to expect, you know? So you step into it, you don't know what's going to happen, and it's not always like, all the best. How hard is that to hear? Like, that, like when she's coming up on the tell-all and saying, like, you know, she was, you were, you were never her soulmate. And, like, I mean, like, I felt bad for you. Like, you know, I, I've, yeah. you know I've, I've always felt bad for you. I talk shit about you. I'm not going to, you know, listen, I have because you are married to her and I hate her. So, um, but like, how does the, like, you know, on national TV, yeah, having this, this woman say like, well, he was never my soulmate. And like, then why did she marry you? Johnny, let me be honest with that. Something that I've never really spoken about on publicly right now, but. That messed me up, bro. Like, that was... It would mess I, me I, up. You're I, a human being. You know, that was the first time anybody's ever asked a question. And yes, it was the producer. But I already flew all the way across country. I already committed. I already left everybody behind everything to come here. And we're filming. And in, like, the first month of filming, 
He's like, you know, my soulmate, my ex was. Like, I'm like, what the flip are you speaking about? Like, I exactly. don't. Exactly. Bro, like, that shit where, that, where I walked away and said I need some time, that was so real. But inside my mind, I was, I was going to explode. I promise you, there wasn't cameras and the whole world watching me. I would have reacted a thousand times worse than just going to go try and sit in a room and talk about it later. That, that for me was... You know, even though I still carried on the relationship, but like that taints it. No matter what you do, that's in the back of your mind. And somehow I still got bloody married. Maybe I'm just naive or stupid or something. But like, no, I just, you're, you know, you're blindsided by like, you know, you thought you were, you, you thought you were with a good person. I'm sorry. Like, I'm like, I, <laughs> this is a lot for both me and Sinjin, actually. I know. Like, I'm you know, so, this, this, yeah. It's a lot for the both of us. So if I trip over my words, I'm sorry. But like, you know, I have a lot of feelings against Tanya. And obviously, Sinjin would, has yeah. many, many, way many more than I do. Um, and, um, you know, but like I, I could never imagine some, you know, like I married my soulmate who's on the couch over here next to oh, me. Oh man! But like you know, to hear that someone saying like that, well, that's not my soulmate. Like then, why did you take the time and waste? If why marry them? I, I don't understand that. You know what? How Tanya long gave did you the... know Tanya before the show? I knew Tanya about a year and a half before the show. Um. Like I said, she came down. She, I'll be actually met. She came down to Cape Town. I was a bartender, you know, as, as told on the show, and we kind of connected. And she ended up never going home. She was on a four day vacation. She ended up coming back and staying with me for three months. Um, and then which we extended obviously longer. But yeah, I just, I just feel like. <sighs> so when she went to South Africa, like, was, was it for you? No, she went to South Africa with another guy. <laughs> I saw I saw Tanya sitting at the bar, drinking beer with another dude, and then her sliding her number to me secretly while, I'm sorry to say this, while my other chick was still on the side, bro. So I, I was like, ooh. So my chick that I had at the time saw her slide the number. It was shitty. I rejected it. She had to slide the number a second time to me, Tanya. Like, you know, we go to chatting. I hate to I say like, this. So you were her sloppy seconds in South Africa. It seems like that, bro. I don't know. Like, like I don't want to like you down, but like Jesus, you know. It seems like it seems like I've always been second wheeling it. If I think about it honestly, like I've always just been, always maybe just been somebody that she thinks she can mold into something that she wants for the rest of her life. And the ideal person that she wants. And she thought that she can find a little white boy from South Africa. I can change him. I can learn him these things. And, you know, black and brown culture and everything going <laughs> on. And you know what I'm saying? Like, I think she, she threw a chance in almost manipulating me a little bit into believing and thinking exactly the way she does. But I was not that person. I'm a free thinker. Like, I'm not there to listen to your opinion. I kind of just shape my world around my own. That's kind of weird. I don't know. <laughs> but, um, no, like, I, I get it. Um, like, you know, because it, it's insane. Like, I, you know, she met you, you know, you, you were like, like, plan B, I guess. I don't know. Um, and, and yes, yes, something, Johnny, I haven't even spoken to you about in our little private conversation earlier. Um, when, when Tanya came to Africa and uh, she left that guy. We got like a hotel for a week, and she actually in that hotel confessed that she's in love with another guy. Oh my and god, Sinjin, Jesus, God. Yeah, bro, like you can look, you can even text her and ask her. She will no thanks. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna text no, her. Don't text her, it's not worth it. But what I was saying is like she literally sat in the bed, she's like, I'm still in love with this guy, other guy in America while she's here with her different Navy dude in South Africa running around because he bought a plane ticket. Um, you know, then I was like, shit, you love somebody else and I'm out, bro. Like, I don't have time to deal with those sort of emotions where you like me, maybe because I fuck your brain. Down. Oh, oh. <laughs> it's a fine, whatever. It, maybe where we have great, great intimacy. Sorry, bro. <laughs> maybe it's we fine. have great intimacy and everything and maybe that's what made you 
like me more, but she said she was she's deeply in love with this guy in America. And he, and that's so this you're guy. You're like sloppy thirds, then? I don't know, bro. At this point, I might just be a lobster thrown in water. And just <laughs> 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 I swear, I feel like just. Like a, like a used doll found in the dump, you know. I don't mean to laugh, but like God, like it's like this is, no, this look, is insane. I've a I've a took that trauma, no, thrown it away, and cut it all off with my hair, and so that's why oh it's, it's nice God, for me I... to speak about it. You know, I know I've took like literally two two and a half years to actually openly speak about all these things, but it's where I am. Did Tanya ever tell you like who her real soulmate is? Like, as you know, it wasn't you, evidently. Yeah, she Tanya actually believes it was her ex before me. <laughs> God. Yeah. Then I'm like, and he ended up. I, I, I don't want to. Yeah, I'm not. Yeah, I'm not gonna go into how he ended up. It's just a little crazy story. But yeah, they did say that. Like, I believe that my soulmate was my ex. That's what was said to me. So. um yeah, I'm a dumbass for uh, no. getting the tattoo. I still have the bloody wedding ring thing. I'm going to get it removed in Thailand. It's going to be gone. Um, but it's kind of speaking to you now puts a lot of this in perspective for me, Johnny. Like, I feel like I haven't spoken about this to somebody. Like, so that's why well, I feel this needs is... to be heard, you know. Exactly. Like... You know, Tanya's out there saying, all bunch of shit all the time. Like she's she speaks so much about me. I'm wondering if she's over me. Like I'm like, time to move on. Speak about somebody else. You got a new boyfriend and things things are happening. I don't no, know. Girlfriend now, Eve or her, whoever that is. Uh oh. Okay, cool. Yeah, sorry about that. I just I never saw her face because it's always blurred out. So I don't know <laughs> what's happening. Um, but other than that, like I just I just wanted to go on a full life, man. Like, just stop speaking about me all the time and all these little ins and this, and he did that, and I was always right. And was, to be honest, bro, this is, Tanya's even told me this was like your life would be easier if you just listen to me. And I'm of like, course. whoa, bro, like that's not, yeah, red flags everywhere, eh? Big red flag, Ooh, waving it. <laughs> and like I, you know, I'm 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 a 90 day blogger, and um. I, you know, I follow a lot of stuff and I have not seen you talk about her at all. Like you just wanted to move on and live your life. Exactly. And, um, but this woman, your ex, just won't, 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 won't drop it. She won't, bro. She's like everywhere, every corner she gets, she speaks about me. And she speaks about events in her perspective. Her what fans? Happened? What, all three of them? Oh, Which no, yeah, you know. They're all four people who like Tanya, like who? What, what fans? You know what? Through my my whole breakup through Tanya, nobody has ever approached me and wanted to take a photo of me and ask me where's Tanya. They don't give a shit. They're like, oh, send her, you know, photos and blah blah blah. And I bet you when she goes, they all they all they're asking her like, where's Sinjin? You still speak to him? I don't know. Like, I'm not trying to like. I don't give no, a shit. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm like I'm like a D-list celebrity, you know. I don't have much, you know. <laughs> but I'm just like I just like don't see the purpose of it. Keep on doing it. Maybe it's bumping up her views a little bit, you know, from seven to nine. I don't know. It's just like you didn't say from seven to nine. I love I that. Did, oh my god, you're my people. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. <laughs> from seven you know? to nine, he just said. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God, I love you, Sinjin. I'm gonna get oh, a call the best now. He ever said. Oh my God, it's from seven to nine. He just said, <laughs> "Like I love it, I love it, I love it." Like you know, because I don't know how Tanya has fans. I don't get it. Uh, you know, I, I listened to that, like you know that YouTube podcast interview and they're about Tanya's fan fans, huh? What? <laughs> what? You are the most hated cast member on 90 Day Fiance. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I, I, I think celebrated. She <laughs> the most hated. How? Did, okay, so like, let me ask you about that. You know, you were Tanya at that point. How did she feel about the whole world hating her? You know, to be honest, towards her feelings, it did. Inf it did impact her a lot. She was. It was like. She but she was, doubled down. 
I know, I know. She was, bro, that's her mindset. She's gonna back whatever she has to say. I always say she has, she has this, uh, uh, she should be a politician. She has a politician mouth. There's no, if you ask them a question, it's a thousand miles around and maybe you can get the question tomorrow. But you know what I'm saying? Like there was never a true getting to a conclusion with her. It was just whatever she oh, feels well, I, and how I, she I, thinks. I get that. And also getting mental cues from, okay, this is okay for me to be like this when actually it's not, but you won't see that because that's how she's been conditioned to I'm believe. Sorry, I'm laughing because like, I hate her so much. I'm like, you know, and I know, you know, she hates me, but because I've called her out on all her BS, like, you know, when she like, you know, and what really got me against Tanya, and I'm sure you remember from four years ago in 2019, um, she was like, you know, trolls were like seeing her messages and she was using like her childhood drama, uh, you know, her childhood trauma, I wish I should say. And using that as a weapon to fight trolls with, and I'm like, and like that's not how you do things. Like you don't use childhood trauma to as a weapon to to fight trolls on Instagram who yeah. don't like you. And like that was the breaking point with me and Tanya. Yeah, no, it's true. Like like I just said, she would, she would. Whichever way she's thinking, she has a million ways of justifying her ways of thinking. So you can, dude, I've never won an argument. I would say, you know, you never it, will. You never will because it's always like it's better this way because of this and because of that, because of that, because of this. That's why I say she has such a political mouth. Even in the house, I was like, listen, can we just do it? No, it's better, it's more efficient like this. Do it like this. Just listen to me. Like, and then she tries to always like underplay me as having mental health issues because I have ADHD and I can't really focus much. She even plays on that. She's like, but you can't do this because you have that. And I'm like, stop victimizing me. And like, what the, f you know, like, I don't, I don't get everything that she was pushing and the narratives. And I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I just, I just felt like I was there for her to just hopefully become this man that she wanted. Fucking, I, you know, I just, and she tried to groom me in a way and, it doesn't work, bro. That's why I just drove out of the driver and left. Well, no, let's. What did she promise you, like when you came from South Africa to Connecticut? Like, what what did she promise you? I want to know. Yeah, you know, she said we have a place to live, everything sorted. She did mention me back in her mom's house, but I didn't know it's a little shed in the back where I've got to fix up almost the she everything. shed. The she shed, you know, the pink walls and no roof. Yes. You know, and, and for me, I was just happy to be here. I come from South Africa. Like, I'm just happy to be at a place where there's a blanket on the bed. Like, I'm, I'm grateful for this opportunity. And I'm here with my new love of my life. And my life is starting. Yes, we're sleeping in a barn in the back of your mom's house. You know, but I'm just like, this is it, though. This is where we start. The American dream, right? But eesh, the American and dream, then more like it. You get to Connecticut, um, and then, like, what happens, like, when you're in Connecticut? Basically, also, the, the, the suburb that I lived was a 55-plus community, so there was no oh, young people. There was sorry. no young people. Wait, 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 wait. I, I, did not, I did not even know that. So you moved into a 55-plus community? Oh, my God. All oh you heard was people oh, lawn oh, oh mowing? Everybody was just lawn mowing? What? Yeah. <laughs> You live in a senior citizen community from so she took you from South Africa where you, Cape Town, where you South left Africa. your family, your friends, your whole life to a seniors complex in Connecticut. Oh my god. Yeah. Oh my god. I still I still had to move out a lot of boxes. There was stuff everywhere. I, I, it wasn't I, like I yeah, I was just the guy to come and fix and help and impregnate and make people better. Like, <laughs> I, I can't get past this senior citizen part. I, I, she sent, did, did, oh my, did you know that, that you were moving? I didn't the, know like, that. I didn't know that. I was just like, I'm going, oh my just God. Sitting, sitting in the back shed, but it was a 55 plus community. And it was like, there's nobody out there for me. Like this, this. No, nothing, there shouldn't be. There's no, there's no. Not making a new friend. I'm stuck with Tanya and her mom at the house. 
Oh! <laughs> you know, so yeah, that nobody really knows that. That's why so when you were filming, that was at a seniors complex in some yes. place in Connecticut for 55 yeah. and older people. Yeah. Oh my god. For the oh trailer park, basically. Oh you know what I'm saying? Oh it's my a, god. Oh my yeah. god. It's not funny, it's just really it, it's I, not I, funny. I, I feel not. like like it just pisses me off. I was just happy to be here, to be honest. I didn't see anything wrong. I was just like, I'm grateful. I'm going to take this opportunity. Did they tell you when they got there, like that it was like a seniors complex? Or did you realize no, like, there's I, like, no I, kids I playing and everyone's out. old and playing bingo? Like what? what, what yeah, what, what I happened? only found out. I only found it's a senior complex when everybody was mowing the lawn every day because there's not much else to do. And the camera crew was out there filming. They're like, why is everybody mowing the lawn all day? And then I was like, yo, this is a like a 55 plus community. And we're like, oh, we understand now. I don't have words right now. Like, <laughs> yeah. huge, like, like wow. I, I Jesus. You, you know how many times the PAs, this is uh, of the camera crews, like the personal assistant, had to run out and ask people just to switch off their lawnmower for 20 minutes so we can get the scene done, you know? Oh, my God. <laughs> Yeah, it's like, been a crazy just, ride, bro. Like, People I, don't know, I, you know, they just know what they see on TV. And... and we didn't talk about this backstage. I'm because this is this is like my reaction is like, I, oh my god, I like I told brought you, you like, to a seniors complex when you lost all your friends and family moving to South Africa to, to a Connecticut seniors. Oh my god, it's so horrible. Yeah, yeah. And 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 she was at the time. Oh my god, she, she was she was living in Washington D.C. And she literally said, oh, I had to move because it's just going to be uh, too inconvenient for us to stay out in D.C. So we can just start at our mom's house. Well, I would have loved to just go to D.C. and kind of start out there instead of a shed in a 55 plus community where I'm mowing grass and trying to fucking paint the walls that they're not pink. You know, I don't know. Oh, my God. <laughs> Engine, I am uh, like me as a human being. I am so goddamn sorry. Like yeah. that, what happened to you? Like, I am so sorry. Like, and like, I had, <laughs> I mean, I'm so laughing because it's like, it, it's up Tanya's alley. Like, you know, but like, I didn't, you know, like, this is insane. Like, this is crazy. You were like brought over to You brought, you, you were brought here and, you know, I made a couple of quips back in the day about like you coming here from Africa. Um, I'm chill, bro, you know? <laughs> like, but like, you were brought here from Africa to go to a senior citizen complex where you had to mow the lawn and do housework. And live in a shed. And live in a shed. <laughs> I'm, sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And for some reason, I was super grateful, to be honest. Um, were you? I tears to that. Was, was life bro, in South I, Africa that bad that you were grateful that you were like in like in no, this situation in Connecticut? No, South Africa was great. You know, I'm just I'm a very optimistic and like grateful for whatever I have. Like I grew up very poor, bro. Like we did not have money where I come. Like you know, I'm used to going to bed. Maybe I'm lucky I get a, a mom might. Did Tanya before. know that? Tanya did know most about that. You know, oh and, and, and I and I feel like I've expressed it a lot to her. And that's why I was just so grateful because I was coming to America. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is a new start with the love of my life, my soulmate, which then told me a month later, she's not my no, soulmate. No, not your soulmate. Yeah. Not your soulmate. So after I land, she tells me that. I'm like, yo, this is crazy. You tell me something, you're in love with another man, you deal with another man. I fucking still commit and like a dumbass and fly out here because I really... I did. I really had feelings and love for her. I can't explain why, but I did. You know, and I was like, you know, fuck it. I'm gonna, sorry. I'm going to leave all my friends behind. I'm going to carry on with my life. I'm going to go further. And, you know, I saw that as, you know, maybe she is a stepping stone to my life. Maybe me and her are going to be together forever. And But I was just dumb, bro. <laughs> I, uh, I should have seen everything as it is. And it's just, yeah, I just... It sucked coming in and hearing that a month later. I'm not just soul made him. My mom being so much on my ass, and it's just, I just, yeah. Let's was, talk about that. Like, so you, so you get to like, you know, um, Shady Pines. Um, yeah. <laughs> you get to Shady Pines in Connecticut. <laughs> so what happens when like you get there? 
Yeah, it, it's kind of crazy because you you almost forget where you're going because she has a massive amount of camera people following you. Like when the people follow you, it's at least twelve to fifteen people, like behind you, in your new world and life. Um, but getting there was kind of weird because I knew she was gonna leave right away. She was on a on a way to Costa Rica and to go do her thing over there and whatever that is. I was just whatever pro you want to do. I'm pro you and you have fun and yeah, bro. And here we are doing this podcast. <laughs> so you, you get there. Um, how quickly did like you know the mother put you to work? Uh, to be honest with you, it wasn't really that crazy. You know, um, what a lot of people don't really know, I kind of bounced for a couple weeks. I kind of left a little bit, took a train up to upstate New York. Uh, but when I came back, I was definitely put to cutting the grass, mowing the lawn. And, you know, I, for me, coming from South Africa, that's just what men do. Like, I'm used to doing manly work. Like, for me, that's oh, I easy, bro. That. I, can build a, I can build an extra room to your house. Like, I, I, I have... Like a different perspective of how Americans think about it, but I see now that coming that it was just, you know, it was, it could have been planned better. I could have been told more about it. I could have been informed, and I just think even getting and living with somebody's mom. Look, Tanya's mom, she works construction, bro. She ain't, she ain't no lightweight. She puts up drywall, and she's, you know, a lot of love to her, but she's a feisty one, so. Yeah, if you mess with her, I was definitely nervous, like, walking around there, like, you know, you never met your mother-in-law, and now you just live in the shed at the back. I immediately felt like, damn, I should have been doing more than this, you know? They kind of maybe look down a little bit, like, why couldn't you guys come and have more money when I arrived, or why couldn't I have money, and you know, it's just, I don't know. It was weird, bro. It was a weird situation, but... So, did... Did they work you around the clock like it should on TV? You know, it wasn't, I, I wasn't, I wasn't hundred percent as it goes, you know, but I would say like 80% of it was bro. Like I had duties to do, I had things to do, move this, clean this, do that. You know, she was but, a single lady. Did they say to you like, these are your duties because you're here now. And like, you have to like, you know, mow the lawn or paint the house. Like, like yeah. in, that's fucked up. Yeah, you know, T Tanya's mom literally said, like, while you're here, your keep is not free. You would work to be able to live here. You know, if you want to live here, you got to do this and do that. And for me, at the time, I was like, that's normal. Like, I'll do some shit. But I was like, I also came from a country. I'm not allowed to work. Um, also, I'm going to say this right now, that even though we filmed the first season. Tanya was the only person to get paid. I didn't see a cent from 90 Day Fiance. So you never saw one cent? Never one cent. At all, because they couldn't pay me. They sent it to her bank account. I'm not sure what was done of it. I'm like, I, I just want to like, I was just there, naive, wow. don't know what's going on, filming this huge show. Let me break this down. Yeah, you know, you and, and it's from, true. You, I just you came from truth, Africa. Like, I, Listen, you came from Africa. You were brought to Connecticut by somebody who never considered you her soulmate to do hard labor and paint walls and, and mow the grass. And you never saw one cent of it. Am I getting this right? Yeah. Yeah. You know, maybe. maybe, <laughs> like, maybe, maybe. Are you like. I don't know. I just, I like I say, I was naive. The show said they can only pay her. You know, maybe, uh, maybe through her, I got some, maybe support something or something through the money that she got. I don't know. You know, I was just, like I say, I was dumb and naive. I was just happy to be here. You know, I was on a show. Life was exciting. I was like, what the hell's going on? You know, I didn't really pay attention to the T's and C's. Um, I was. Yeah, Johnny, I was just here, yeah, like, just living life. Just like, this is it. I'm living it. I don't you weren't living home. life, Sinjin. You were stuck in a senior oh, a senior oh. complex, painting <laughs> walls and doing she sheds and mowing lawns. Like, That's... that was not living life. I'm sorry. Like, you yeah. know, you were being taken advantage of. Like, like this, uh, and like, 
y'all, I know we started this live late because me and Sinjin were talking backstage for a bit, you know, going over and like, this is news to me. Like, I, you know, you were being, and I don't want to say the word, but you know what I'm going to say? Like, you know, they were using you. Oh my God. I can't, I can't. Yeah. I, and then, and I don't know, maybe I didn't see it because I like, just come from a very poor background where this is norm. And, you know, I grew up, I was 17 years old working on platinum, the deepest platinum mine in the world. Like I was seen as to be a masculine man. So for me to come here, I had to like portray that. I, I don't know. It's just, it's weird. You can always speak to every South African man. They would say they're like a masculine man because you had to be, and you kind of want to take care of your woman, no matter what she does. And, just want to make sure she's okay and she's loved and that she knows she's loved and caring for. And I just think through all that, I like, I like just missed whatever I'm doing to myself. You know, so I kind of like. Here and you, and you're doing all this stuff in like, you know, Shady Pines, Connecticut edition. Um, and you know, you're painting walls, mowing, mowing lawns, doing the she shed, like roofing stuff. Like, you know, just like, you know, annoying hard labor and then what happens um tanya while you're there goes to what costa rica for yeah. uh what a month to go to witchcraft school yeah she went there for a month she went to do some i don't know voodoo stuff in the forest coke i don't know what they were doing coco no, what, whatever's what, happening what, what did she tell you you know you know you're on the 90 day you know the, the k-1 visa you had 90 days right so what did she tell you? Like, did you know that Tanya was going to leave you when you got here? And did you? Oh, I have, a, I have 8 million. Yeah, followers. yeah, yeah. You know, you know, to be honest, while I applied for the visa, um, she did mention, hey, you know, your visa is unfortunately uh, arriving on this date. She did mention it or not? No, wait, let me tell you this. And she told me this. And then she said, hey, I can't cancel. I can't cancel again because. I canceled last year and it only happens once a year. Therefore, she has to go. So it was, the only inconvenience was that the only time the retreat was was on the time I was coming and she couldn't cancel again because she canceled last year. And that was a oh, too fucking to bad. Going. So I let her go. I was like, damn, I don't want to mess out another year. Like, go, like, have fun. I'll be here somewhere. You know, I just, I was just. I was honestly something I was just pro Tanya. Like, I don't know why. <laughs> but yeah. Does she have a golden pussy? Like Sinjin, like I like I'm sorry, like like what about Tanya <laughs> like was so good that you let her drag you like I, I, this? I don't know. To be honest, I think like you know, I'm a very loose cannon, I'm very sorry, I'm, person. I, listen, I, I was a little like, you know, I, I said, I said, I, I said golden pussy, but like, you know, and like, I'm not, I'm not trying to be untoward, but like, God, Sinjin, like, what was what it about her that you let, her. you let her do all this stuff to you? I, 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 I yes, bro, that's, that's a good question. I don't <laughs> know. You know, I, I just, um, maybe I, kind of saw this as my soulmate, you know, because I told her she's my soulmate. You know, that's when she's like, but you're not, you know? So I kind of had this great feelings and vibes and positive attitude to, to where we're going and I'm moving and we're going to do all this great stuff together. And I think I just got trapped in that, like, you know, somebody loving me and what me being loved. What did she promise you exactly? good question i can't even remember probably a whole bunch of bullshit um but i feel like yeah she, she, i don't know i, I think i, I yeah I, I don't quite know what she promised me maybe she promised me nothing i don't know maybe i'll still simp for that <laughs> as i see it like god like you are like <sighs> uh, you know i want to say a lot of things right now which will get me in trouble I want to say a lot of things right now. I'm getting in trouble tonight. I really do. Um, so she told you that like she was going to go to like Costa Rica for like Hogwarts witchcraft school while, yeah, while you know, you she, were there. She definitely mentioned it 
while I was coming, like I said, the timing is inconvenient for her, but like I allowed her to go there, allowed her to do whatever she was. I didn't know who she's meeting up with, where she's going, what's her location. I had no idea. I was just like, go be free. And, you know, she was like, I'll need to be a better person and promote myself as a better person. And I need to do this realistic. And you were, you're okay with that, with her leaving. She was partying. I was. While, you know? while, while they were filming and she's partying with men in Costa Rica and getting drunk. Yeah. It, it, look, to be real, it was definitely uncomfortable. As I said, I never had exposure to filming and whatever. And just having my chick leave. And right. and to be honest, I did. I do have a little bit of trust issues. Like I'm not, I can't just trust somebody off the bat. Like it takes me a while to build my trust. And especially during our long distance, you know, I wasn't always trustworthy of her because she would like just ghost me for three days. And then I'd be like, hey, where have you been? She's like, oh, sorry, I... On my While she was in couch. Costa Rica at Hogwarts? No, no, sorry. I bounced back to our, um, like when we did the long distance relationship. Okay. She would like ghost me for three days and I would hear back and she would just be like, sorry, my phone died. I don't even to charge it now. And me just having to believe that and hope that she wasn't just doing something else and just sleeping on her friend's couch. Like, you know, so I really had a bit of a trust issues. And then coming down here, her going to Costa Rica salsa lessons and i don't know what the hell's going on and what happened in that month like when like she was in costa rica getting drunk every night with, with you know people like wh what were you doing that whole month yeah you know so, so i'll be honest the first uh, i think the two weeks i left to upstate new york i took a train all by myself i was nervous i don't know where i'm going i don't know what i'm doing but I had one buddy up there I met in South Africa and I just was seeking some solitude. You know, I wanted to seek a friend like, you know, the chick I came for here right now is leaving. I don't want to chill with her mom. I would like want to be with a buddy because it's a lonely time for me, bro. Like nobody even knows. Two weeks after I flew out here, my grandmother died and I was unable to fly back to go see her. Oh my because God. if I flew back, I was still within my 90 days. I'd have to reapply. So I literally chose to stay with Tanya and miss my grandmother's funeral. The only grandmother I've ever known. Oh my God, I'm so sorry. And, yeah, bro, this is like, this is stuff that people don't know. Even the show didn't want to film this. They're like, it, I'm like, why? Like, this is real. And it really messed me, bro. Like, I was, I was a complete wreck. Like, it, yeah. And you know, not having somebody and, yeah, I, I yeah. To think about it now, I'm actually getting traumatized now a little bit. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I haven't and, really and, spoken about all this. You know, I'm just speaking as it comes out. Leave for Costa Rica to do like her witchcraft school, but like when your grandmother died, you couldn't even go leave and like be like where you needed to be. Like yeah. that's, that's that's. I literally, I literally had my younger brother carry the casket, and he called me. He's like, "That's that was supposed to be you." Because oh I'm the oldest. And he was like, you're not here. Granny's dying. Like, my dog even died three weeks later than that. Like, it was, bro, it was just, it was a lot of emotions. And you have the show with you. And you have Tanya that tells you they're not your soulmate. And you're ready in America. You've paid thousands of dollars to be here. You're supposed, you're supposed to be getting married. And it's just like, it was crazy, bro. Like, I am... I am happy that that chapter is done. So she couldn't, so if she could leave and go to Costa Rica for a witch rest goal, but you could not leave and go to your grandmother's funeral. Oh my, yeah. that, that's so depressing. I'm right so even sorry. Now, like, yo. And the only thing I have of her is I did a, a sneaky visit to South Africa like six months later uh, when I finally got my green card and I was able to leave the country and come back and stuff. And I just, I, yeah, like, it, yeah, it was, it was, yeah, it was crazy. And my grandmother's cremated, so I don't have a, cr a, gra a grave. Oh, my it. God. So, yeah, I, I did get to give her a hug two days before I left, so. Yeah. My grandmother raised me, so, like, I'm, like, I, I'm sorry. Yeah. Like, that's, like, I, like. I'm sorry. It's same for me, like. My grandmother was my hero, bro. That was the only Dude, grandmother. My grandmother was, was my best friend, and she yeah. raised me. And like, I to hear this, and like, oh my god, like, even me, bro, that's... like, it breaks, you know, and it, and it, and it, and I feel regret. I was like, 
damn it, should have I just should have I just flown home to go attend a funeral of my family and friends? Could you have? I, I, I could have, but then I was going to have to start the whole process over. It's going to be another two years. Um, so I was literally stuck there, right there. And I was like, shit, like, what does my grandmother want? Does she want me to go back home? Does she want me to live my life fully out here? And, you know, I made the decision. I've, I've already paid all this money and I've already committed to this chicken. I'm out here right now and I got to say goodbye to my grandmother three days before she went to the hospital. You are a good man, Sinjin. Hey, you bro, are a good man. <laughs> you are a good person. man. I'm telling you, you oh, are yeah. a good person. You, Thank you, bro. Yeah. You it's just like you I haven't really like, are. About like, this, I'm just, so. I'm like, you know, I, I, I can not even. Sorry, yeah. I'm just pull it together. I'm sorry. Uh, but you are a good guy, Sinjin. You really are. You really are. And I, I cannot even imagine being in your shoes when that's happening. Like, you know, all for the guys of a TV show. Like, you know. Yeah, it was. Oh it, super, it was one of the most traumatic experiences, bro. I was like, yeah, I, I, I'm like crying about it right now, listening to what you're yeah. saying to me. Like, it's it that is traumatic. Like, I. And this it, is something I couldn't, I haven't been able to share to the audience. You know, I haven't really well, I, I need a second. It. I don't want to leave you like a, a mask. Go ahead. Go ahead, Sinjin. Talk. Yeah, you know, like I I there's there's so much unshared stuff and on and what really happened behind the scenes and how it really went down. And you know, like I say, like nobody ever would have known. Like, you know, this might sound crazy after my grandma and I had my dog, and that was even more like it was like I was like, everybody's like as soon as I left, I felt like I abandoned my my family and friends and you know my parents are not in the best state in their lives i was kind of helping out there as well and it was a huge huge decision just flying out here but yeah bro it's uh it's uh been way rougher than uh you see on tv bro yeah i'm here, I'm here. Give me one second. I got you, John. I hear you in the background. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Thanks for watching me. I haven't really been live and didn't really want to say all this stuff because I'm like protective of my feelings. But I just felt like so much stuff was said by me by Tanya that, you know, she just kept me in her mouth for two years. So I'm just, Malti just sharing a little bit more of my story, you know. No hate to anybody. Even a hi, Tanya, watching right now. Don't call me later. And scream. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, my God. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, I'm coming back. Sorry, 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 sorry. <laughs> Horrible. I'm sorry. That, that that just took, like, something out of me. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's the first time you're ever sharing that story. So. Well, just, it's, uh, it's a very sad story. Sorry, like, I didn't tell you in our pre-post. Uh, no, we, no, <laughs> you didn't tell me that. Like, But like that is... <laughs> it's really yeah, sad. It's really, it, really it, sad. It traumatizes the shit out of me. Uh, I, I'm it, traumatized listening, listening to it. Like, I, I could not imagine, like, you know, how you felt and... You gave up everything to be here in Connecticut in, in a seniors complex, uh, doing, you know, manual labor and mowing the lawn and like they, they treated you like shit. Yeah, it was it was it was it was wild, you know. I I you know, I didn't know what to expect coming here, but I did not expect all of that, you know. So Nobody was, should. Yeah, and like I say, like I don't know, I was just I was happy to do all of it. So yeah. <laughs> I just saw it as my duty, you know. Oh my god. Um, okay, so um did Tanya really not watch reality TV at all? What did you say? Did Tanya I'm sorry. Did Tanya really not watch um reality TV? Yeah, you know how how we actually came up being on the bloody show is that we really applied for the K one visa, and I was watching 
Damn, bro. David and Annie was on that season, but there was some 59-year-old man that had a 19-year-old Filipino Mark, girl. And he had Mark, a Mark and Nikki. Yes, and they were speaking about a prenup. And I, and I never knew about marriage, so I called Tanya. I'm like, hey, Tanya, what the hell is a prenup? Remember, I was watching the show with my mom before I ever knew I was ever going to be on it. And um, Tanya was like, what hell of a show are you watching? I was like, this 90 Day Fiance? And she was like, we literally applied for that visa. Like, what the hell? And then this is the craziest part. It's like your phone listens to you. We got an ad on Facebook saying that you want to apply for 90 Day Fiance. And we applied thinking I was, ugh. And I got a, I got a, uh, a call five months later after applying. And um, they did a little interview and they were like, we good to go to make a shit show. Let's go. <laughs> But yeah. Okay. Um, so we're a little I, off track. Here. And like you know, you mentioned the prenup. Um, like, can you like you know? Because I you know, did you have like do you have millions of dollars in your account? Like, do you, like are you rich? Or is time? No, why, why was why was the prenup conversation like brought up? I want to know. I, I I think the prenup conversation was like, dude, I had nothing, bro. I was just. I was no manning on farms. I was like volunteering my hours, looking after horses and, you know, taking uh, international backpackers on hikes up mountains and to river falls. That was, that was like what I was doing. You know, I didn't enrich my, my bank account. I was always about enriching my soul. But anyway, um, oh, I lost my train of thought. You got to re-ask me that again. <laughs> That's it. You got to re-ask me the question, Johnny. No, like the prenup, like, you know, like, oh. why was she like gung ho on a prenup? Like, does Tanya have millions? Like, why, why did she need, like, why did she need the protection of a prenup? Yeah. You know, I think Tanya, when I mentioned the prenup, like, what's it for? I think she wanted almost to protect herself and what it was happening because this might sound weird what I say now. She was almost like, when once we got together, we had separate bank accounts. We did not share one bank account. Hey, it's maybe because she got paid and I didn't. I don't know. But we had separate bank accounts and um, she wanted everything to be separate. She even told me that she's not going to put me in, in no will when she dies. She's going to put the youngest little child to buy oh us or younger God. sister. And dude, that was such a huge argument. I was like, are you serious? It should have been. I don't know. She was, and dude, she, she also refused to take my last name when she got married. That's why she stayed Tanya Maduro even after getting married. Like, I felt like she was never committed. Don't want to take my surname. I'm not in your will. Separate bank accounts. Like, I, and, and, and I didn't handle money. She, she handled it all. I didn't even know what, you know what I'm saying? I don't even have a lawyer even till today to handle these TLC contracts. Like, I'm just, you know, she tells me I have to pay this much in tax and I just send it without even getting proof from her. Like, I, I might be a dumbass, to be honest. I don't know. You, you kind of are, like, a little bit be, uh, when it comes to Tanya, but you were in love with her, so, like, you know, I'll forgive it. Like, you know, like, you, you loved her, and you thought, like, you know, you're going to be with her, but, like, you know, you kind of were... I was fully dumbass. committed, bro. I'm yeah. sorry. Oh, my God. For me, for me, when I was, like, when I spoke to you about the will and stuff, like, it's like, I'm leaving you. I'm not going to leave you with anything. Like, that's not my... You're not my priority. I'm going to leave it to somebody else. And I'm like, but that's not how couples do it. It's not how we roll. This is not how we communicate. This is not how, this is not how we do things, man. I need to, like, for me, I'm a very lovey touch person. I need, I need like somebody to like share everything with me and let me know that we are one and we are doing this together. I always just felt like a little bit of a side plan to her master plan, you know? And she just tried to, I don't know, like, yeah, it's just crazy, bro. Like, I don't know why I did that. You were in love and blind, blinded by it. Blinded by the light. Yeah, you were. You were. Like, you know. Yeah. And what you're saying on this live about, like, you know, what you went through, like, since you got here. Oh, my God. I, I you know. Yeah, if I if I didn't hate Tanya so much, I hate her a million times more at this point. 
you know. You know and what? Tanya was always number one on my list. John shit list. Tanya, <laughs> yeah. number one. Number one. If I, if I had ten shit lists, Tanya would be at the number one on all of them. Like yeah, at, bro, even 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 me talking to you right now is going to be triggering. <laughs> I'm getting a phone call as soon as I hang up here, you know? Hi, Tanya. Hi. I'm here. <laughs> I'm just joking. But she's the no, one that keeps talking about you. She's the one exactly. that wants to drag your name through the mud. Exactly, you're Johnny. Not, like, you're you not know, bothering like, me. Go ahead. Yeah. You know, exactly, like, I haven't spoken about her in any platform, not even on a story, not even with a blog, not even with anybody, you know? And, She's just been keep speaking about me and keeping on and keeping on. And she's trying to stay relevant or what the hell's ever happening. But I'm just like, keep me out of your mouth. Like, move on with your life. And the thing she says, it doesn't, like, she's not, I don't know what she's doing. But I just, you know, I just thought that it's time for me to also start speaking. Because I only got to let somebody speak and have her own narrative. Although only nine people listen to her narrative. Like, I'm just like, I need to. Say what I got not, to say. Not the same nine people, am, Sinjin. <laughs> yeah. You know? And like, you know, too, like, and like, you can hear, I've been through a lot where nobody says that. She doesn't even mention that. She's never mentioned a word about anything I've been through. It's always about what kind of trauma she's been through being with me. But it's been never about like, dude, this guy's had a crazy, this has been crazy for me, bro. I've, I've definitely developed some like mental issues from all of this. Like it's, it's a lot, bro. My four years here in America has been wild. Hence, I'm leaving to Thailand on literally in five days just to just get out of here, bloody, probably throw my phone in the water. I don't know. You know, it's been wild, bro, and it's nice to finally just speak to somebody that's willing to listen. I can get, you know, my voice out there a little bit. Um, she recently said that, like, um, you, um, use her for things that you need. Yeah. You, you um, know? No, you can finish up. No, go ahead. I, she oh. said, like, you know, she, I, I, I hear from him when he needs something like a green card or, whatever, you know, whatever else. Exactly. Like, dude, this is exactly what I'm speaking about. She's creates her own narrative. Like, she went on a podcast with whoever saying, you know, Sinjin doesn't talk to me. He doesn't, he only talks to me when he needs something from me. I'm like, number one, we try to be friends and it doesn't work out. I don't want to talk to you, don't want to communicate. And number two is, yes, for my to apply for my 10 year green card, she had to still write a one page letter just to say how our marriage was and email that to me whenever, but she went on a podcast saying like, I was just needing her whenever I need something. And I, yeah, you know, and like she said, she would, you know, even in the past, she said, Hey, I'd always be there for you if you need to apply for another green card or whatever. And I literally also, Hey, I need one letter for my green card. And she went on a podcast and said, he doesn't talk to me. He only calls me when he needs stuff. Oh my God. Like, like she even said, like when he needed the green card, I'm like, you wrote one letter. Come on. I sacrificed so much. I did all the other paperwork myself. She wrote one little letter and went and made it as if it's the only time I want to talk to her. Listen, I don't want to talk to her. Our friendship, it doesn't work out. You're divorced. Like Tanya, You're done. Like you, you guys shouldn't be best friends. Like that's, yeah. you know, that's how this yeah, works. I don't want to be. And you know, even when we were trying to be best friends, she would still call me and tell me I shouldn't be doing this right now. I should be doing this because that's best for my life. And I was like, listen, we broke. I'm gone. Why are you still calling me to tell me how to do things? Because that, that's the way she thinks is the best. She does not get that there's other narratives out there than her own bloody mind. If you do not like do what she says and go and not growing the way she would like, like you know, won't be good enough. Like, I think, I think I wasn't good enough to see the way things going. Like, I just, I don't know. I get so upset.
because she turns everything into a drama story. Oh my no, I did this. Because that's Tanya. That's why I hate yeah, her. And it's I'm not sorry. even the truth. Bro. I don't mean to cut you off, but like, this is why I've hated her so because exactly what you're saying, coming from the horse's mouth syndrome. Like this, I I, I knew I I mm, I knew what Tanya was about the second she got on TV. The first episode, I'm like, this bitch is fucking, she's a liar. And like I knew it from the second she got on that show, and I yeah. you know, and like that's why I hate her so much because she's like you know an opportunist. It was bro, like I like even Sorry. speaking to you about all this and I'm and like sorry. hearing myself speak, I'm almost like. I'm almost like therapeutic and being like my own therapist right now, bro. I'm like, damn, like, you know, and, and that was one thing she even told me in the past. Said, if I don't start seeing a therapist, we're going to break up, you know, and that is her narrative. Like, if I don't do this, that's done. And I told her, listen, I come from a different country, different world. We do things a little differently. Yes, therapy can help. But don't try and force me into it. Don't try and say, you got to go see this. you got to do that. You're never going to get better if you don't do this. Like, you mentally fucked. you, you got to do this. you got to do that. Like, I was just like, that almost gave me more anxiety. I was like, can I just focus? I know I have all these things. I'm so like, mad right now. I'm he, sorry. I'm so mad. I'm he so was mad. just I'm so... so <laughs> I can't. So crazy. And I got, I got some... Hey, bro. I, uh... We actually I used to did it, Tanya, because I, I, I knew that I, I could see what Tanya was about five years ago when when you guys were on a show. And everything I stuff. said is true. Like, I'm sorry. Yeah. Like, it's it's crazy. Let, let, let me tell you this. Like, we, uh, I, um, you know, per request, I did go see a therapist. We did go see a couple's therapist. The first couple of therapists we went to see, she disagreed with Tanya's narrative. Guess what happened? We had a new therapist the next week. You know, I was like, I was like, okay, because I was kind of agreeing with what this therapist was saying, and she was not. Tanya literally had a fight over in the office about racism, and I was like, Tanya was like, we can't go back to her. She's a racist. She's this. No. And I was like, I kind of Tanya like, is I was, a key kind of hearing her. And so Tanya, Tanya was like, this is not putting my narrative. I'm gonna get a new, I'm gonna get a new psychiatrist that fits my narrative. And that's exactly what happened. And we stick with that psychiatrist for like three weeks. And guess what that psychiatrist said? She said, You guys will need a lot of help if you want to be compatible. And that's what I knew. I'm gonna I'm out. Like I don't I don't want to put a lot of work. Three years worth of going, going to <sighs> talking to somebody for three years so I can be happy with my partner. I'm done. Like I want to be happy with the bat. And she was like, "Let's put the time in. Let's put the effort in." I'm like, "Is this not working? Like I don't know where this is going. Like you just keep picking somebody that chooses your narrative, you know?" And because the other lady was agreeing with me, like you know, it's like Tanya, you got to change. And she was like, ah, nah, nah. "So we got a new one." And you know, I don't know. You know, you could probably get any therapist that could fit whatever your mind's thinking. I don't know. It's just, I'm just, I was dumb, bro. I was dumb to fall for that and just like see how it was going and just, it was stupid. Tanya is a perfect example. I'm happy for spilling the tea today. <laughs> people like, you know, she wants to be like a social justice warrior and do all this stuff. Meanwhile, she, brings her husband from africa to do hard labor in her house um i'm sorry i you know i i can't hold back anymore on this because tanya is fucking awful she's awful and like i you know like i mm, um and she's doing this to sinjin saying that she that he's not her soulmate doing all this stuff trying to like be like in all these causes like, you know, you know, you know what I can't stand? People who try to get involved in causes where they don't have a dog in the fucking race. That's what I can't fucking stand. And that's I, Tanya. I, 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 Tanya yeah. wants to put her fucking nose in every, every story. Guys, I'm sorry. It's fine. Watch your swear in there, Johnny. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm like, joking. you know, I, look, I look, can't I love, stand I, people... I, I, 
Look, look, I, I'm laughing right now, but when I'm nervous, I laugh and I really resonate and I, I, I laugh, but I am still like, I'm sad in the back because of all this, you know, like the expectations I had for this relationship just it turned to zero, it turned to dust. It, uh, it was just, just different. It was, I don't know, like it wasn't, it wasn't at all what I had in my mind and yeah, it was, I, I, I. I regret now missing my grandmother's funeral and everything for her. Like, that's not on you. You know, who cares if I had to go back? And, I, I understand what you're saying. I thought, saying. I thought like, this is my life, you know? It's, uh, and she made me believe that, you know? She made me believe that she does love me and she wants to go forward and she's trying her best for us. But I just think it was, she was looking for that perfect boyfriend that fits that perfect narrative. And, yeah, bro. I don't know how you you can create somebody like that. Like I've always been free spirited. Because Tanya I, is just like some person that wants to like you know speak for everyone. Nobody needs yeah. people to speak for everyone. Like nobody. This is what irritated, yeah, this is what irritated me so much. Even she had an opinion on everything, and I'm exactly. like, so your opinion. Like it's fine. You you don't agree, just carry on or. You don't have to. That's why I tell her, I call her a politician mouth. Because whenever we used to argue, even if I was right, if I say that cup is upside down and she was, and the cup was upside down, but the cup was, she would say no. What well, actually should be right side down because we had to do this and this dynamic and these people voted for them and this is why the cup up you wrong. And I was like, there's no way of winning when you have like a politician mouth. Like I, she even admitted herself. Like she told me, keep quiet. Listen to me, follow me, and your life will be easier. And I was like, yo, don't tell me that. I'm gonna do the opposite. <laughs> you know what? She says, oh, don't drink today. Oh, well, guess what, buddy? I'm having fun. And how did you feel about her? Like, you know, on the show, you, you were portrayed as a drunk all the time. And you listen. Know, it, 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 it was I'm, I'm portrayed as a drunk all the time. So, like, I yeah. listen. Um, how did yeah. you feel about like that? Like that you were drunk all the time and like you couldn't, you know, you couldn't do anything in the seniors complex now because you were drunk so, and at the bar so, or whatever. So here's the tea. You know, I, um, we did our first season. She looked like, we all know how she looked. So second season rolled around. They need something on me because I'm too good of a dude, right? I can't just. You know, so Tanya just speaking about that, my alcohol all the time, even though I don't drink all the time, she speaks about it all the time. And then that creates a narrative and the show runs with that. Because, and then, you know, I'm going to bar doing job interviews, having a beer, and then I have six hours between scenes and I come home tipsy, speak to Tanya, but it makes it look like it was actually, I just walked literally 15 minutes from the bar, but six hours have passed and then she gets on it. Oh, look, you you smell like beer again when you come home. I'm like, well, I've been to the fucking pub. The owner of the pub that I just got job interviewed, after my job interview, he bought me beer and shots. He's like, dude, you want shots and beer? I'm like, yeah. You know, and then I go home later and it becomes like this whole. But she made you seem like you were a drunk who was incapable of anything. And uh, what a else loser, pretty much. You know, she, That's what she said. Yeah. You know, she was she was already looking like a shitty human being, so she probably had to make me look shitty as well. And even though that happened, I still feel like a lot of fans resonate. Yeah, there's people like you're an alcoholic, you're well, well. but also I'm my South African. Our drinking culture, like I'll have. Who a cares if you drink? Like Who cares? You know, I'll have some wine whenever. I don't care if it's Monday, Monday morning, Monday afternoon. If I feel like a beer, I'm gonna have one. I don't. I really don't care. And that became such a huge thing. Like everybody thinks I'm drunk at 10 a.m. and fucking sloshing around and swearing my wife and pooping on the carpet. Like, come on, man. <laughs> you know, so I was just... while you had to like mow the lawn and deal with her mother, like, right? Like, you know, you at know, this point, Tanya at, left at for point, like the whole month. So you were stuck so there with, um, with her mother that you barely fucking knew. Um, and you had to like you know you were under her tutelage like you know it, yeah. like you know and yeah it was something people don't know when uh, when we moved out of her, her mother's trailer this was never filmed by the show 
We actually moved into mother's friend's house upstairs, which was hella weird. So I lived like in this room upstairs with no cupboard, just a bed and a window. And that's like where we were. And, and, um, oh, I, yeah, I can't say this. Yeah. Something else I want to add, but I just don't think I'm allowed to say it. It's cool. Um, we can maybe mean you can speak afterwards about some stuff, but I'm just a little nervous. No, There's something no, under the table, I you know, so I don't want to. But no, you know what? I, I'm down. I'm down to say it. Like I, even when moving there, everybody says I didn't work on set. I was working construction, bro. I was working from six till six every fucking day. So in my language, you know, I was, you know, I didn't, I didn't have my my stuff yet, but I had to make money. You know, we, I was, I was working double the hours Tanya was. She was a bartender three times a week. I was at work six, seven days a week, fucking. Making a just to build trampoline parks in Connecticut, bro. You know, and I could never say this, and everybody's like, "You don't do anything." And I have all these other things going, and she never also comes up for me. You know, she's just like, "Oh, this picture, that's fine." Even though she knows it's untrue, what people are saying about me, she will just deny it. And you know what? I used to work six hours a day and to come home and drink a beer, and she used to say, "Oh my God, you're drinking today." I'm like, "Shut up, shut up." I just did hard construction work, like. Picking up steel, driving on forklift, spraying the roof, you know, like I'm like carrying around cement, like I want a beer. And she just never gave me a gap, bro. Even though I was, you know, doing a little job to get some money for us under the table, I wasn't allowed to, but I had to do it, bro. I'm, that's who I am. I, I, I'm a working dude and it's just it's a lot of stuff I can't speak about and I hope that doesn't get shown to whoever, but... It's like, it was real for me, bro. And nobody says it. Nobody speaks about it. I did lots of jobs. Yeah. Like, I was working, bro. I, I, was, ma I was making over four and a half. I was making more than Tanya. And I still didn't see a cent from TLC because she took all the money in the first season. But I was sent to work to make sure that I'm making money. <laughs> Which I did. I don't mind, you know. But well, Tanya... I just want people to know that. I just want people to know that, like, I'm not, I'm, I wasn't just sponging. I'm not. I'm like, no, I, I like, I think everybody watching this chat right now knows that you're a good guy. You are a good guy. Yeah, um, and the, oh, and everything I'm saying is, is fact checkable. Like, I, like, there's so much I could not share, and yeah, she just never really cared. But like, um, you know, with the um. The, 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 um, sorry, I'm so like. Um, Can I use the bathroom real quick? Go ahead. We've been chatting for an hour and twelve. So intermission. Right me, me, and Sinjin are gonna take a five minute break. So Sinjin, do what you gotta do, and then we're gonna take a, we're gonna take a break. Okay, five minute break.
Sorry about what I just heard, brother. Yes, there's a lot of people out there uh, hating on this. I know, so cute. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> There's a little perm. Is it everybody is already down there? Mm -hmm. I'm back. I'm sorry. Here I am. I'm sorry. So no problem, bro. <sighs> I'm sorry. No, don't be sorry for anything ever. Like, don't ever be sorry. Um yeah. like 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 just you know, we talked backstage for a while. And like the stuff they said on live, like you, 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 you never see even backstage, like you know. So, um, I'm on your side. <laughs> like I just, I can't, I can't fathom what's what I just heard. Like it, it's a lot for me to comprehend. I've done, you know, I've I've been live with millions, not millions, every cast member from the show, um, and. Your story, I have to say, is the worst. Worst in 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 by means of it's just not good. Like it, it's like I feel so fucking bad for you. I do. I don't like, feel bad for me, man. You know, I no, I, 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 I moved on. You know, I, I left that trauma behind. Dude, I, I do. I, I do feel bad for you. I'm, I'm not going to lie. Like, I feel bad for you. That, it's a lot of trauma. It, 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 it's a lot of trauma. And like, I. It sure was, bro. Like, I, you know, and I, I just, my heart goes out to you. And like, I'm trying to like, you know, I've done so many interviews with people, housewives, nighty cast, sister wives, whatever. And like. I have never been. I've never been like more like moved. I want to say, but like by what you're saying to me, because this 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 is crazy. And like you know, yeah, I've, then, I've like, interviewed a lot of people. I've interviewed a lot of people. Um, I know, on, yeah. <laughs> on reality TV, and like what you're saying to me is like, I you know. Hi guys, I, and I appreciate you, bro. I appreciate you, you for giving me the uh, platform to kind of really speak about this. You know, I have never ever spoken to no. anybody else. Probably just told the stuff to my mother. No, to be no. he's you know, so has never spoken to me like before yesterday. Like I know <laughs> before yesterday, we, me, and him have never spoke because it's Tanya. This is true. And I, yeah. I got a DM from Sinjin. I'm like, huh? 
<laughs> I was like, Sinjin. I mean, let's make it happen, bro. So <laughs> yeah, you know, as you know, uh, Sam, I think, yeah. And I couldn't have picked a better dude to do it with. And I appreciate your sympathy and everything coming you... on you. I know there's a couple of uh, people there that's you know, reporting some stuff or whatnot. Um, but I want to let you know. It's a lot of love, bro. And this is authentic. I have, I have loved this is real shit, too. bro. Let's this is not. Let's keep Yeah, going. let's do it. Did you know that Tanya was going to serve you with the papers at the tell-all? Um, I did not quite know. I just, I just, I knew I was going to the tell to sign some sort of divorce document, but I don't think that was the legal deal because I still had to go to court and sign legally and stuff. So that, I don't think that was the exact moment that happened, but, um, I knew they brought me to the tell all to kind of be a little enclosure to whatever she's got going. So it was smoke and mirrors, the whole divorce paperwork at the tell all. Yeah. Everybody thinks I was officially oh divorced at the God. tell all that not happened. I'm, uh, only been officially divorced since, uh, I actually got divorced on Valentine's in February this year. Okay. Um, so she used that as a way to like, you know, get ratings or views because, you know, um, she had to serve you like, you know, so here, here, here's your paperwork and you just sign them like type <laughs> shit. Yeah. That's not how the real court really works. You know, oh my <laughs> God. because you need like a note notarizer there. You need to know that whatever you're signing is really authentic and legal. I can't just be signing it under some bloody cameraman, you know, it's got to be uh, a little bit more legit. How many good days did you have with Tanya? Like, you know, when you got here, it's like, you know, Shady Pines in Connecticut. Like, you know, were there, were there good days? Like, 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 was it all bad? You know, um, like in for real, in, in coming here as well, it was kind of like, you know, it's kind of like a holiday. You're in a new country. Somebody's driving you around. I can't even drive on the right side of the road because I would kill a lot of people. You know, so it was it was kind of like still a little bit holiday vibes when we kind of met up, you know, like taking me around, taking me here. But, you know, there's only so much you can show each other in a 55 plus community until it gets a little <laughs> boring in life. <laughs> I don't want to laugh, but like it's sad. Like you, you got brought here from Africa to live in a fifty-five plus community where where you did hard labor. I'm sorry. Um, let's talk about the OnlyFans. Um, you know, she had mentioned recently that like you know, you're on OnlyFans, giving everything away to everybody, and um, you know, yeah. you, you you post thirst traps, um, and uh, She's above that. What are your yeah. thoughts on that? You, you know, Johnny, like I, um, you know, I, I'm still, I'm on a weight loss journey. I'm about 12, uh, 12 to 14 pounds down about dieting, just cutting on alcohol, just to put it out there. <laughs> um, but yeah, you know, I posted myself, my weight loss journey, my boxes, and she literally, that's what I'm saying. She can't leave me alone. She goes and says, oh my God, Sanjin so just posted a third, a first trap in my boxers. One for all, these are boxes for men because there's an extra bulge package, you know? And I'm like, one, have you been walking around with this underwear four years ago? And number two, how the hell do you still know that? And number three, <laughs> like, why the hell do you even say that? What kind of likes are you trying to put upon? Like, she's always trying to put it on her. Oh, he's still wearing my boxes, posting a third trap. That's so cringe. When she literally makes out with her sister, like... We don't have to wait. You made out with your sister and you worry ah. about me posting in your underwear four years ago. Come on. Wait, and wait, it's wait, wait. Underwear. wait, wait, wait. So, huh? You just said she makes out with her sister. Yes. You can, you can go online and buy it or something. She made out with her sister. Full on tongue. Oh my God. Ah, you know, the whole vibe. And then they want to come call me. Am I hallucinating? My boxes. Come on. <laughs> she makes out with her sister on OnlyFans for money. 
but then she's going to yell at you for being an OnlyFans. She makes out with her sister. Amen. She made out with her sister. Oh, my Even, God. Uh, oh my yeah, God. bro, it's, it's, you can go look it up, but she's there. And it's the same as me making oh my out with my sister. It's gross, bro. It's gross. Liberals. And then, that's what I see. Like, like she does like, nothing oh my God, wrong. I can't. But if I, can't. I do something that's beyond her seeing, it's cringe. Like, I, this is I'm speaking out. Like, I'm so tired of her to see. Oh, I and you like should be tired of her. And you sh and you should speak out. Like, this is insane. She makes out with her sister, but she wants to, like, talk about you and your thirst exactly. traps. Exactly. Oh, my this God. This is why I'm here speaking. Like, I haven't uttered a word of her in two years. But I'm just tired of her saying all the shit about me. And I'm trying to be the yes, bigger man, so trying to be more mentally stable in order to Crazy. indulge in all this but i can't help it bro she she pushed me to where i need to start talking so people know like what's really happening and not just what is her narrative is and her nine followers that are all we don't have that in one yeah i mean that. making like for money like making out your sister for money for like what only yeah. things and, and like unfiltered i guess which would bullshit stephanie and her far jars like that that, that like, exactly like like your like your your followers saying that that's incest, bro. That's what it is doing. incest. Yeah. You know, you know your sister selling. is incest. Yeah, she was selling her fort as Christmas ornaments. You can put oh on your God. tree. Come on, bro. And she wants to come tell me, don't do this, don't do that. No, bro. Like I need people to see, like, if it's not her narrative, she's fine with it. She can do whatever she wants. But if one, somebody else is doing like what she's doing, it's wrong because it's not, you know what I'm saying? I don't even know how to explain her mind. Like, it's just screwed. Like, she's selling poop, making out of her sister, and I'm posting in a box or a panel that she wore four years ago, which I don't even. That's don't the limit, Sinjin. How, how dare you wear my boxer shorts? But I, I can make it with my sister all day long for yeah. money on OnlyFans. Oh yeah, my god! I, I really, I don't, I don't. This is why I'm so tired of her narrative. Oh my god! And, oh, I I'm can't. so, I'm so, I'm so dissolistic. Let's have a women's retreat and we can all be free and we can love and we can. Oh my god! No, bro, that is not what's going on. She believes that's going on. Yes. Her narrative that she's created for herself is so skewed. Like, yeah. Enjoy your women's retreat. I don't know. <laughs> it's just a bunch of bullshit smoke, bro. Like I, I'm here. I hope I'm not too much. I'm just trying to. No, no, you, no, like no. How you're, I you're go? Fine. You're you are fine. I promise you, you're fine. Um, like like you know, it, it's like shit. Um, it's, it's a lot of stuff to like you know, wrap your head around. It. And I believe everything you're saying. Like you know. You guys can go uh, fact check this. You can Tanya even Google right like, now. Really Tanya making out of her sister, and it will pop up for you. You will see it. Oh it's on. Just go to Reddit. You know, everybody's on Reddit. <laughs> and she sold the video. I don't know for how much dollars, but she was just like, it's money. I'm like, okay. <laughs> to make out with your sister. Like, I like. And it's the sister we had on the show, bro. Oh my God! No, not the one of the child. She has a stepsister, but it's still blood. It's still blood, blood, blood related. So it's like <sighs> you're still making out of a blood relative. You know what I'm saying? Like it's no, I that's hear what she you. Tried to justify. Oh no, it's my half sister. That's still sick, bro. It, don't like, don't come at me for wearing an underpants. Because I heard her on a podcast, like saying, like you know, oh, I just, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm tasteful on my OnlyFans. I just do, like, you know, I, no holes, Tanya, is what she says, and uh, no holes, Tanya, no holes, Tanya, uh, and I, you know, I don't show anything. I just, I just like risque photo, like, you know, like stuff like that. Yeah, and um, come to find out that she's making out with her sister for money yeah she probably she probably deleted the video right now because she knows she'll get smoked but it's out there bro it, you you can you can even direct dm her and she will confirm it i can guarantee you that like all the shit i'm saying like i am yeah i am yeah 
It's not you, shit you you're saying. It's, you it's can... the truth is what you're saying. It, it's true. Amen, bro. I won't be putting my face out here if I'm going to speak bullshit. <laughs> this is the wildest. Yeah, that's why I feel like I need to speak yeah, up right about right. it because she's just, she's thrashing my name everywhere and I'm like, Really, bro? Or you want to go? We can go, bro. Like, how about you, like, crashing into the bike? Yeah, you know that was also a very, very. We went to Thailand together, and um, we were there over Songkrong, which is Thailand's New Year, and uh, she booked a ten-day cacao retreat in the forest and eating whatever and doing whatever. I was like, cool. I didn't book that shit. I was like, I'm gonna do my own thing, and it was. Um, was literally New Year's, which is song crying in Thailand, New Year's. And she told me, I, I dropped her off at 7 in the morning. I had a little motorbike, which I rented. I dropped off at 7. She told me, don't go anywhere. You cannot drink today because you have to pick me up at 7. And I told her, listen, it's New Year's. Like, I want to go have a couple of drinks. Like, in Thailand, it's a big tradition. Everybody's on the side of the road throwing you with water. And there's people giving you free shots. And it's just like a, a great vibe, you know? And... and and she literally told me, you may not drink today. You have to pick me up tonight at 7. Not one of these women retreat women can take me home, which is two minutes down the road. You have to be there to pick me up. And if you're not, like, that's a problem. You know what I'm saying? And, and then when she tells me that kind of stuff, I'm like, you know what? Like, in the beginning, I accepted it. Like, okay, I'll just go and while everybody's partying, I'll drink a salsa water because i got to pick up Tanya at 7. You know, which I understand, but at this point, I also had some animosity around her. Like, I didn't want to do that. I want to be free. I want to go enjoy New Year's with the Thai people. I want to chill. So, you know, we were out there, and I said, bugger her. I went, and um, some people threw me a water, had a couple shots of them, you know, come back on my bike. And Tanya was like, hey, come pick me up. And I left with the bike, and I crashed the bloody thing. Because uh, if you've ever been in Thailand, you know that there's, even especially on the islands, there's always sand and it's crazy driving a bike out there. So, yeah, I slipped on the bike. I fell off, pulled the bike on the side. I was completely scratched everywhere. I let her know, and she was able to get a lift home. And I arrived like an hour later, and um, it was complete hate towards me, bro. Like, I was screwed. Like, I was – the hospital was closed. Like, was on the island, it's in Kopangan Island. There is not, like, hospital 24-7, you know. It's just like a little island. Hospitals maybe open from eight to whatever. And, um, you know, I stepped there and she didn't want to hug me or kiss me. Just started swearing at me. What a piece of shit I am for breaking my, my word and everything. And I was just like, you know, like, you can't give me all the mentions. Like, I can't live according to how you say I need to be here every day. And that I never get any freedom. You know, it's not my fault you signed up to this. Like, I'm also here to have a good time. And um, the next day I had to go to hospital, get everything cleaned. Like it was, it was oh bad, you know, and I, um, they actually advised me to stay in a hospital for longer. And I was like, no, I'm, I'm leaving because Tanya even said like, this is a lot of money. We got to get you out of here. And I'm like, shit, like I, I, okay, I'll get it. I'll get some bandage. Like, I, 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 I remember like them cleaning up my wounds. I was yeah, so needed, like, like more medical care. Like, yeah. And, and we went back home and they were like, you need like two weeks of care, like bed care. I was screwed, bro. And Tanya was no hug, no sympathy. I went every day to sit in the shower. I took a chair. I sat in the shower and to wake myself. And I pulled the scabs off when they wake was easier and rebandaged myself for two weeks. Tanya gave me no sympathy, not even a hug, nothing. She said, this is all your fault. I'm She's a dead shit. inside. Why did I do this? Yes. I'm like, yeah, yes, you no know. Like, or soul. Gave, yeah. yeah. And I was like, you gave me the old and 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 I was like, this is bullshit. Like, I can't wait around for you 12 hours and just wait somewhere. Like, I want to have fun. Like, it's New Year's. The people, like, it's not my fault you booked this cacao retreat for 10 days with some woman in a banana tree. Like, I need to, like, also join my life, you know? And I think it's all fading. And she, she gave me nothing, bro. I healed myself. And uh, I heard her on the podcast the other day. She's like, oh, I wish I really, I really gave Sinjin... Uh, more love because I think his inner child needed it. Once again, I'm like, yo, listen, it's not an inner, we don't have to go past trauma, trauma issues. Like she always likes to go so deep and justify things for her own mind. 
You know what I'm saying? This is exactly what she's doing. And I'm like, yo, even if I'm a 60 year old man and fell off a bike, you know, because I drove around the island and I couldn't find you. And, you know, even after, I still deserve some sympathy from my wife, some, some love, some yes, empathy. You, you, some, you would some, like, you, that. some like, yeah, even if she said, you know, damn, you know, I, I'm sorry that you couldn't wait all day. And I'm sorry that I couldn't book my own lift home. And I'm sorry that I couldn't do it by myself and put it all on you. And I'm like, there was none of that. I was just a piece of shit laying in bed, can't sleep, no sympathy. She you didn't want to go time. driving, get me pain pills. Like nothing, bro. You like, were doesn't taking care. away from her good time. That's it. You were like exactly. you know, a nuisance to her because, like, you know, she want she wanted to have fun, and you were taking away from that because she's a yeah. fucking horrible human. Exactly. Being. She wanted me to sit around and not have fun while she's having fun, so I can pick her oh up. I'm like, I'm also I, I here. Can't. I'm a human. I can't with this. I want to have fun. Like the vibes in Thailand around that time is absolutely crazy and. I just like she was so selfish and she's always been like that and i'm like i just i just like ugh, bro like come on bro even if doesn't matter even if you're in a right or wrong like well, not thing, the person you know, you love she was never sympathy. your soulmate so like yeah. she didn't care about you she knew it she goes that was never my, not my soulmate so oh my god I want to say so many things right now. Oh my God, I, yeah. I really do. But like, you know. Yeah, so that, that was just, just, that was just awful. And she always uses that story to depict herself as a victim. I never fell, I never needed to medical myself. Bro, I had gaps out of my skin and my thighs. Like I was, I was rashed out, bro. Like I was, like I was bed, bedridden, bro. Like I was, and it was just like so shit, like. And she still, she still did a 10, 10 day retreat. She didn't mean to me. She still left early in the morning, came back late at night, but she couldn't do that when I could drive. But now all of a sudden a retreat still continues. I'm there in bed, fucking sore. I can't move anywhere. It's just a pain in the ass to get myself a glass of water and maybe a banana to eat. Like, and she's out there fucking cacaoing. Nah! Okay. And I'm like, okay, I will, uh, See you when you get back. <laughs> you know, like if Tanya I just, ever I just, truly cared about you. Like this. I, 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 I think she did happened. somewhere. I, I think Tanya did care about me somewhere, but where? I think she was more when I don't know. I, I don't How? know. <laughs> who who what when where why? When did when did Tanya care about you? Because from what I'm hearing know. on this interview, like she never gave a good goddamn about you. I'm sorry. I know, I know. I just, I, I still, even now. You were hoodwinked I, by her, and like, I don't know what it was about her that got you like all hot and bothered. Like, listen, like you know, I don't know, but like, she seemed to have you wrapped around her fucking finger, and yeah. no matter like what you did, like you know, like just the, the thought of you being in the hospital and like what you just said, and like you know, she's trying to get you, trying to like make you leave medical care because it was it wasn't convenient to her fucking schedule like yeah there, there are fucking words <laughs> like, like you know i told you not to curse like this is fucked up like there there aren't fucking words to describe how horrible this fucking woman is like yeah, did, did you did you just hear what he said no i didn't him no. out of the hospital oh what i said oh sorry <laughs> no you yeah yeah because yeah, it, so, it, it didn't it didn't suit her like agenda for the night or ever or whatever. Exactly. Like, Me being injured wasn't part of the plan. She didn't care. Yeah. Oh my god. She's like, I'm just gonna go care oh and do god. whatever. And... Yeah. It was crazy. You know what? She's like, she's like, and you know what the crazy thing? Like, she whenever we travel, she keeps tabs on everything. Like I was recently quoted for a trip we did three years ago in South Africa that I stole our own money because we spent this and this on our joint cards. And I'm like, but how do I, how do I, I don't even know. Cause I just suck at money. I don't know. This is maybe another story. I just, I just, after doing this podcast, I think I'm a dumbass and I need to uh, no, you, move on. <laughs> no, you're a dumbass for, like, for liking Tanya. I'll give you that on the, about like, you were in love with somebody who was just using you from from pillar to post 
she was using you in every sense of the word like like i god i i I know i hate tanya so much but after this conversation like like my hate for her is so far beyond what i felt for her at the beginning of this live like like i I knew she was full of shits. I knew she only had like, she only cared about herself. I knew that she wanted to be like a social, what Tanya does is she placates to anybody who will listen to her. Yeah. And she'll use and connive and manipulate them. And like, and like, you know, I knew it the second that Tanya, you know, back four years ago, five years ago in 2019, like she put something in her story and a troll had messaged her. And then she said, well, I was abused and and she was using her abuse, which now I don't even know if I believe as a weapon to a troll who doesn't mean anything and that set me off that set me off because i have been as a child horribly abused yes and like when she did that you know she didn't come off like you know that you know she she was abused and 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 made a she she used that as a weapon to attract the to to attack the troll sorry she used it as a weapon to attack a troll that like sent her a nasty dm and that then i saw tanya for what she was worth and yeah hearing what you just said now oh my god like this whole life oh my god like you know, yeah, it's been. Listen, I, I, I didn't even know I was gonna spill all these beans, you know. But once it got going, yeah, I was like, I was like, I, I got, I got. And even after this, I still got quite a bit to say, you know. I know we've been almost on here for two hours, you know, but um. But let me. All right, yeah, so you know, even after that, there's, there's still a lot to it, you know. There's still. Um. Been crazy. I have to ask you something else, um, and then we'll end it after this, um. Because I broke the story that Tanya was having an affair with Michael. Yeah. And, um, you know, I did not, like, it was somebody who was in the household, I'll say. And um, while you guys were together, while Michael was with his ex-wife or ex-ex-wife i don't know um they, they were they were roommates and um what say you about all of that yeah um to be honest i i i, I did hear about you know michael leaving and you know tanya offering him a place to stay maybe it'll be cheaper for them to stay together um i just i just to be honest i never knew about the allegations from somebody that was being in living inside that house because i just permissed it as uh propaganda social media hype or whatever because they did plan to live together like they were texting there was um, a lot of things happening but like i said i didn't really speak much to tanya because i don't want to do much of her but i'm not sure if they i think they lived together for a little while and then they moved apart. I don't quite know what happened, um, but it is a little just. It's a little concerning to hear that this has come from somebody that's close to everybody and it, knowing no, what's up. Like, and like, I like, would not I, go. I never knew that. I just, I just, whatever Tanya told me, I believe at the time. You know, maybe. Yeah, well, yeah. I know she's a liar now, but like, I, I would not have like pushed through with the story. Like, you know, it's a, like you know. If I say something wrong, like I'll get sued. So like I had to be like certain that like if my source is telling me like what what's going on, I give me pictures, right? Yeah. Like you know, and you know if I if I move forward with a story, 
Like it's because I know with 100% certainty that like it's it, w- what I'm seeing is true. Like, you know, cause you, you leave yourself open to like your lawsuits and whatever. Um, and like, you know, I, I, I rolled with it cause I saw the pictures. I saw like, you know, things. And, um, when you guys were together, you and Tanya, like, did you hang out, hang out with Michael often? Yeah. You know, we were kind of like a uh, couple friends, you know, we were, uh, oh, yeah. even when Juliana was still there, we used to hang out all the time. We actually went to Venice beach. We all had a little holiday together and we, um, normally seem to get about very long. I know, um, Tanya actually went up there privately once before the tell-all to use Michael's expensive bathroom as a great photo shoot. Um, and also she told me a makeup artist is right around the corner. So it was whatever, but I like, I don't know, like it's saying there was somebody inside knowing a little more than what I've been told is like, uh, yeah, bro. Like I, 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 I like, I've already been through so much nonsense with this chick. I hope that, you know. So, like, in in your head, if if Tanya was having an affair with Michael behind your back, would that be, like, you know, believable in your head? You know, to be honest, I don't perceive that because I see them as very good friends. And I once asked Tanya, like, when you're single, like, like, what would you do? You know, would you have sex with any of my friends and... She's like, no, I won't fuck anybody who we've like been related with or who we've been friends with and everything. So I just kind of took her word for everything. Maybe that wasn't the best idea, but I, uh, I've never really heard in depth about these allegations, but I, I guess it could happen. You know what? I, mean, I don't know. Go ahead, drink some wine. I don't, I, I just, I just don't know. I don't, I don't quite know what to say to all that. I just. I've already been traumatized a lot by her. I don't need another flip on the well, radar. Tanya I'm trying to forget to about Tiffany. her. <laughs> Tanya screamed at Tiffany because, like, you know, me and Tiffany are close. So she and I have the message from Tiffany, like, you know, Tanya just yelled at me because she thought I was the one that outed her and Michael's relationship. So, and it wasn't Tiffany. It wasn't Tiffany at all. Yeah. You know, and I, know I don't know. Yeah, shit, bro. You know, um, <laughs> I know it's a it's a lot to take in right now. It is. Bro. It's a lot to take in. Um, but um, I know that, like, you know, whatever podcast showed Tanya on, they're gonna like, you know, there's a part two coming. So I wanted yeah, to. Yeah. Get- for me, for me, to be honest with you, I think. Um, they might be, I, 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 I don't know. You know. I feel like they're playing it up. They, they need some views, you know, Tanya needs views. So she's holding on to anything relative, but if it comes out that that really happened, that would be another disaster. Cause like I said, I just spoke to Michael last month. Like we still keep chatting, you know, and I just hope that all that just ain't fake. Last month you said? What'd you say? Last month. Oh yeah. Last month. Like you just, said last month. Yeah. We just, we, me and Michael. So you, you don't speak to Michael every day? Not every day. I like, we check in on each other. How you doing? Where are you now? You know, did you sell the house? How's everything going? You know, the we're not really house. buddies. We're not buddies. Uh, he's in the progress of selling it. I'm not sure if it's a closed deal yet. I wouldn't, I, I, I would not have ran with that story if I was not certain of like certain things going on. Listen, listen, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do some inquiry of my own once we hang up here, because if you're saying, and we spoke back and we know who we talk, I will about, give you the pictures, Sinjin, when like we hang up and then you could like, yes. look at, look bro, at send it to me and Johnny, this shit's real, bro. I, I don't know. I don't even know if I can be traumatized anymore. Like, obviously, I probably yeah, will cry. Maybe I shouldn't. Like, I don't want you to like like be more scarred than you already are. Like, you know what? But like, I, I'm just saying. Like, I like I have a lot of proof. And like, you know, B, 
being a blogger and being a public figure, like, you know, if I make a, a bold statement, like, like, you know, that Tanya, I know people, it's bold, it's bold, but I, I have to like have the evidence to support it. And Industry. notice, I, Industry. I, I broke that story out like six months ago, seven months ago, and no one's refuted it because, you know, so I'm just saying, like, you know, I do oh. my homework. I don't go live. I don't, I don't post things unless I'm absolutely certain of what I'm posting. Cause like, you know, yeah. and then you've got to be in touch so TV or, people, platform, or, or you know? people magazine or entertainment tonight. Like, you know, you have to do your homework. You have to do like your, your due diligence and, and stuff that like, you know, when you, especially something like this, like when you come out with something like, it's you have to make sure all your ducks are in a row and yeah exactly um i don't want you to you know it is what it is but you know johnny send me that stuff send me that stuff maybe we can make another live and talk about no i will no no we got some more news you know we got we we got a lot no we Uh, do and like this is part one of this live um but can you say like when like you know we, when you guys were in Connecticut, did you hang out with Michael and Juliana often? You know, when we were in Connecticut, we did drive up to Greenwich and hang out with Michael and Juliana quite often. You know, um, I know Tanya was even working for him, trying to promote the hip hop into wine. Um, you know, so I know Tanya was literally working with him in the same office uh, while they were trying to get a, a red wine off the market um because COVID cr- obviously crashed a lot of markets right. they were trying to so they did work together in the same office and uh tanya did leave the house sometimes to drive up the and go work but I, I i never picked up on anything or never i i maybe but I don't you know, guys we were all chummy, right like you, you hung yeah. out like you know you're, yeah. you were chummy oh yeah me and michael like best buds we go out and Sometimes when we were there, me and just me and him would go out and have a couple beers and leave the chicks at home. And, you know, like it was, it was very nice. You know, it was, I, I, I didn't know anything. I didn't know if anything. If I was somebody who was fucking your wife, I would do the same thing. I'm just saying, like, hypothetically, like if I was. No, no, no. Was, listen, if I knew somebody was fucking my wife, I would break their little necks, bro. Well. You know, I'm just up. saying, like, you know, yeah. you know, Michael and Juliana were also on the show the same season. You're all in the same season of the show. Yeah, look, bro, I don't I don't know. I think you gotta send me that stuff that you have. I will before I really elaborate elaborate. No, I will, I will, I will. I I promise you I will. Um and um and I don't thank you, moderator. I don't like you mad. Like I, I but I, you know, I know that Tanya was on this podcast and it, that that's going to be talked about. And like, I wanted it to like, you know, I, I have, you know, some, my source is some, <laughs> I mean, like you, you all pretty much know it at this point, who my source is, right? Like, yeah, I'm not yeah, saying yeah. Out loud. like, you know who my source is, right? Um, I'm not going to say it, but like, you know who it is. Yeah. Face not. Um, so, um, you know, Sinjin, before we end, because we're, we're we're almost at the two-hour mark. Yeah. Is there anything that you want to say, you know, before we hang up and, you know, that I haven't asked you or, like, that you want to clear up or anything? You know what, Johnny? I think, I think me and you covered quite a bit tonight. I think that even tonight was a bit of a therapeutic session for me because I think some questions you brought up is something that I never really spoke about. So to be honest, I feel like kind of emotionally tired and kind of freaked out about this evidence you're going to send me. And, you know, and I'm, and, and I appreciate it, bro, because I know that you're truly just helping. And I just want to say to everybody watching and I, you know, whatever I said tonight, you can go check it. You will find your stacks at it. I'm not send you, you can promise me while we're live, when I send you this evidence, you can. You can't, you, you have to keep it between me and you. No, I promise. Pinky promise. Like, you, can't, you, promise you, can't, you can't go live and say Come, things. you got to pinky promise me, bro. Pinky promise. I got you. There we go. 
I got to, bro. We 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 not here to uh, screw each other. We we just here to, you know, get the facts out there and like just just for me to also just have a bit of a voice because, you know, she's just speaking shit about me all the time. I just needed to vent and speak about it a little bit. And I appreciate the audience out there watching and listening this long time. And you know, we will see little part two when we get the evidence going and whatever's happening. And you know, I appreciate everybody and. And Sinjin, yeah. I appreciate you. Like, you know, before we end, like, God, like, Sinjin messaged me. I'm like, Sinjin? I'm like, huh? <laughs> I, was, I was like, hey, what's up? We never spoke before. And, like, I, you yeah. know, and, um, you know, um, it is what it is. And we're here talking about stuff. And um, I, like, really, I'm, I'm really grateful for you, Sinjin, for coming up on my live and really like you know telling your your story your real story and like you know stuff that we didn't even talk about backstage like you know like we yeah. talked i'm sorry i had to drop a couple of bombs on you, you know, and like, like oh my goodness you know <laughs> yeah like you know i you know and that's why we were so late because like we talked for a half hour backstage um and i know we've been on the phone almost for like two and a half yeah days. we're good yeah. <laughs> and um and let me say this before i hang up um, you know, there are like, you know, Aaron, um, was, uh, one of Cynthia's friends and everybody who I talked about, I talked to about Sinjin always had like the nicest thing to say about him. Like, you know, he's a good guy. Like, you know, people off, off the show, off camera and like, you know, I'm a blogger. Like I do my homework, you know? Yeah, I know. Yeah. And um, I've never heard a bad word about Sinjin from anybody I've ever talked to about him. So oh. I want to make that known that, like, you know, he's truthful, he's honest, he's a good guy. Um, so, yeah. and Aaron, Aaron was like the, the number one. Me and Aaron talked for a long time. And, yeah, yeah. And Aaron was and great. You- and you know, that's, that's just how I go through life. I want to be real, authentic with people. Like, I don't want to be a two-faced jackal. What you see is what you get. And, you know, it's a little bit vulgar. It's a little bit too much at times, but it's me, bro. Like, I'm not out here trying to spin a story to make a couple of bucks or doing this and that. Like, I truly, I'm just here yeah, trying to be an authentic human in this fake-ass world that we live in at the moment. Um, so, Johnny, I appreciate you taking the time for me. And, you know, I Absolutely. really felt like connected with you. And you really had sympathy. And, you know, we shared a couple of No, I do. Like, you know, I honestly, appreciate like, you, know, you, you, you were married to Tanya. Like, like, like you know, <laughs> I'm going to pray to you, St. Sinjin, every night. Like, you should be, like, canonized. Like, you know, um, because, like. I made know, it through the storm, baby. <laughs> you dealt with that, man. Yeah. Um, you're, you, you are a true good guy a, a genuine human being i appreciate and it brother. i'm happy to and grateful that you decided to come on my channel and speak your truth so yeah and then i guess you know there's more to come uh um, no, you're definitely gonna see me again yeah? everybody's watching keep watching you'll see me there's a lot of more little things to do you know all right, guys, we have a great up. night. We're at two hours. Let's end it. Sinjin, again, thank you. I'm sorry. I love you. And, like, what you went through was horrible. And thank you. And to, to the chat, thank you. And have a good night. More to come. The end. Much love, Johnny. I love you too, brother.